All right, we're at the compound. It's a meeting of the minds. Mr. Simon Stock, e-commerce owner. Travis Jameson, SEO mastermind. Let's get started with another episode of Tropical Talk Radio. Yeah, buddy, you've downloaded Tropical Talk Radio, where we talk about all things entrepreneurship, travel, and lifestyle. If you're interested in more about this program, check out tropicalmba.com. And if you sign up for our mailing list, I will personally send you 50 free podcast episodes that take you along on our journey and expose the insider story on how we started a million-dollar, honest-to-goodness product business while we traveled the globe. The CEO, yeah, just walked by the conversation. I literally <laughs> just hit record on an episode. We, you're just about ready to Joe jump in the pool? Yes. Well, how about you join us? Because I'm ready to jump in the pool. Simon, tell us the story of what <laughs> happened with this program. I got to hear it. Tell us the story about the intern. Oh, right. So, <laughs> so I was looking for an intern or a couple of interns for Ulu Surf. Um, Ulu Surf is your new e-commerce store. Right, more like lifestyles type surf, not just the equipment. Um, so I go to internships.com with an E, uh, looking for an intern, and I immediately get a response. Uh, right away, someone had mentioned that they had heard me on Tropical Top Radio. Already a fan. The guy seems completely awesome, and by the way, buddy, if you're listening again, you're already in. <laughs> <laughs> That is so cool. I'm so so glad to hear it, Travis. Man, uh, what's been the fallout? All last week, I would call it, you know, aggressive SEO week at the uh, Tropical MBA, Tropical Talk Radio, Lifestyle Business Podcast. I sent out a mailer on Saturday night about you know the rounding up everything. What kind of week's it been for you? Well, it's been a week where you've just made me look really awesome <laughs> all, all week long, continuing to do so. But uh, it's been a busy week. I've gotten so much response from people actually interested in these tactics that actually work well and quickly for SEO and yep. people want to make movements asking hey will this be good for my site site structure all kinds of stuff right so we were just having a great conversation that I wanted to tap into you guys a little bit about one of the things you said Simon was you know when you see people that have businesses like back when you're an aspiring entrepreneur and you don't have anything going yet it's kind of this magical mystical thing yeah, it's very, it's very awe-shocking. Um, you put them on a pedestal, really. You almost think they have something you don't have, maybe. Right. Uh, which is completely false after meeting millions of business <laughs> owners now. <laughs> if anything, I would say the people thinking it probably have just enough skills, just enough quality to do pretty so, much anything they want. So what we're trying to tap into then is like, it's definitely a mindset switch, right? Because you just said, the aspiring entrepreneur has the same resources. Exactly. You know, a, a, a lot of the people that work for me are more talented and smarter than me, for example. Great business philosophy. So what is that mindset shift? Travis, you said you were sort of always a hustler, always the entrepreneur, but what was that moment and what, how did it feel when you when you turned that corner? What was the when moment when I you? finally had the businesses going? Yeah, I mean, what's the, what, was it, what was the corner turn for you? Was it the four hour work week? The, without a doubt, the four hour work week. I'd, I had read business books before, um, starting in midway through high school with the Rich Dad Poor Dad, which just kind of changed my my thought pattern as into how to get wealthy. Um, that working the normal nine to five job but just won't do it. It's not going to happen that way. You'll never have the freedom. You know what's the interesting thing about Rich Dad Poor Dad is a lot of people ride on that book, um, and, and I'm just like totally not hip to that. I totally love that book, and part of it is is it it frames up a normal life as more risky than the entrepreneurial Without life. Without a doubt. Isn't that interesting? And that's something that we all believe. Especially in the modern day, shit. I mean, all these people have had corporate jobs half their life, gone. Right. Life savings, gone. All these mortgages over their head, killing them. And, when also, and also you think like, a lot of the decision to stay in the corporate lifestyle is driven out of fear. Yes. And I, I kind of have this like carpe diem life, like kind of mindset a little bit like, God damn, isn't it a shame to live your whole life out of fear? One of the key drivers that we often talk about is fear of not having prestige. Simon, me and you both said that we've had relationships with people that actually felt sorry for us right. when we were in that first moment. Because I'll tell you my personal situation. I was the vice president of a company. 
and I was really young. I was like 26 years old, and this was like a bit of a accomplishment. It was kind of cool, you know. And people were like, "Oh, I can't believe it," you know. That's that's great. And so when I quit my job to start focusing on my landing pages and start converting sales from my products, people really felt sorry for me. And I was so passionate about what I was doing that I felt like prestige became a secondary consideration. So everybody at this house is, we kind of have a different sense of prestige, right? Yeah. Prestige for us isn't gotten from third party uh, sources, you know? You went to Harvard, big deal. <laughs> right. you, know, you, you got a job at some big consulting firm, don't care. Yeah, yeah. I feel sorry for you. Yeah. <laughs> now, yeah, we now feel sorry for them. And it used to be, used to be looked upon so high, you know? You're so excited and you're like, I can't wait for that big job. Or it's like you're in, you become internally validated, right? Yeah. Like you wake up in the morning, Simon, and you open that laptop and you make a judgment for yourself about how well you're doing. Right. Our love's prestige are based upon what we accomplish, the movements forward that we make. Right. So what are some mindset differences for you, Simon? Like not very long ago, you were non-business owner. Now you're a business owner. What allowed you to turn the corner? Uh, I would just have to say, like we had talked about before, running through worst case scenarios, you know? So many people have the fear of failure, but once you define what could possibly go wrong, then you start taking action. So I think so many people have such a, they think they have one great business idea, but I'm gonna tell you right now, it's probably not gonna work. <laughs> <laughs> it's just not. But until you try it, then you will see the next step that you have to take. And it becomes easier and easier and easier until you build up momentum. It's such a routine, like it's an iterative path, right? It's not like one big thing. Right. I got the money, I, yeah. I put up the site, and boom, driving a Ferrari. Yeah. yeah. It's that big idea that it's it's false. It's not, it just doesn't work. Like I had hundreds of ideas before the surfboard rack took off, you know? And I was just like, this would be it, you know? And to add to that, you don't get to the level that we are of knowing the things that we do without starting at the beginning and trying and failing. Right. It's just how it goes. The exercise in the four hour work week where you sit down and you say, you know, this is exactly what I want. This is exactly how much it costs. Those exercises are very illuminating because when you have a job, you know, when you're a big firm lawyer or when you work for a big consulting, ah, I work for McKinsey, right? right? Or I work for Booz Allen Hamilton or whatever. It's like you outsource your life's purpose and direction to them. It's like, you know, what do you do? I work for Booz Allen <laughs> Hamilton. That's what I do, right? It's defined. But that was such a cool exercise. It's like it makes you pare it all back down and says, you know, okay, you're pumped up that you make 100 grand a year. Why? What do you need 100 grand a year for? When I pulled together my list, I wanted to like go motorcycle riding in China. I wanted to live abroad. I wanted to go to exotic beaches and stuff. None of that stuff you need $100,000 for. No. And so, we're, you know, it forces you to ask those tough questions. Are you internally validating or are you outsourcing it to some company that's written a script for you to opt into? Like... Booz Allen or you know McKinsey. You or McKinsey yes <laughs> so so we talked about mindset we talked about prestige um, what do you think the biggest things for people that still feel like ah oh, these guys are miles miles ahead what's the hack what's the way to get yourself into the mindset I I would say the biggest thing for me was just realizing that it may be hard or it's going to be hard and that you're going to make mistakes. And it, it really never is as hard as you think it's gonna be. But just, <laughs> yeah. just accepting the fact that it could be and then you start taking the actions. Because once you're over the fact of like, fuck, let's go out there and make mistakes. Let's tear it up. I'm gonna drive this business into the ground. Travis, you know? what's your first step out the door in terms of like when you were like, fuck it, I'm gonna start this business. What, like, what do you even do? Do you pick up a book? Do you put up a website? Like, how do you start? Man, it's been so long, I don't even know how I started. <laughs> <laughs> Were you a 30-day challenge guy? No, not at all. Not at all. I, I, I remember writing down a list of business ideas and picking the one that seemed like it would make the most sense, doing the research, and the one I found was like, there's not much competition, I'm just gonna go for it. And I had nothing to lose. Right. And I did. It's like chucking yourself at it with the violence. Yeah. It's like, so everybody always says the question, I don't even know where to get started. And my advice is 
it does not matter where yes. you get started. Commit yourself with a violence towards action. And here's the other thing that I talked with a lot of people about. A Felix Dennis basically says the farther along you get in your career, the more fucked you are because the less likely you're going to be fearing failure. Exactly. And you're going to have a lot to lose effectively. We got a whole pool party going on. Right. We're talking about mise en scene. Yeah. This is a nice setting. So, you know, you're going to be totally fucked yeah. if you step out of that career. She was confused and really here's the thing. <laughs> you're going to feel real you're going to feel like a real shithead for a real long time. I was 26 years old, single white dude, and everybody in my life made me feel like shit for what I was doing. Like, oh, look at that pathetic guy <laughs> with his websites and his laptop. So cute. It's so adorable. I think he's going a little mental. <laughs> and fuck that. You're going to have to act like a shithead for a long time if you want to do something unique in this world, and you just got to suck it up, and you got to look your mother-in-law in the eye and say, <laughs> fuck you, this is my family. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I think that that's it, because... You know, Travis, you, you were on the LBP last week as some guy who legitimately has created some in incredible results online. It doesn't happen unless you just get out the gate on the dumbest shit to start. Oh, yeah. I, I learned the hard way, and I feel like everybody who's really good, they've done it too. You just try. Getting, getting momentum is the best thing possible. You, you just make those hard decisions, those uncomfortable decisions to get started, and everything becomes easier. So, Simon... Uh, you're starting to build up a bit of a persona cachet on the Tropical Talk Radio. People are emailing you right. as an e-commerce expert. So let's talk very quickly, concretely. People are trying to make that mindset swi uh, switch with e-commerce. Let's talk about some concrete first dipshit stuff that they could do to get committed to action. Yeah, so dipshit stuff number one. Just start emailing manufacturers and <laughs> tell them you want to sell their stuff. Okay. Um, you'll be surprised that these people actually do want other people to sell their stuff. I do. And they will tell you how to go about doing it. Like yes. My first one, I mean, it was just me saying, hey, I would like to sell your stuff. And they're like, okay, where's your website? Okay, so now I need a website. Okay. And then they would be like, where is your, you know, um, EIN number, you know? Um, you need an EIN number. You need an EIN number. Easily, day one, you can apply. IRS, Google it. Um, so I'm like, okay, let, next step, let's get that done. And then they just, they'll walk you through it. And they the site's really on Shopify.com. Right. I mean, you're $30 a month away right. from having an e-commerce store. I mean, it's free for the first month, too. Throw right. up a store, you know, find someone. I mean, maybe better off looking at the smaller, you do not go after the big boys quite yet. Woo! Hot riding. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Um, maybe aim at the smaller guys, you know, the the very smaller. So I aimed at very small. And here, you know, here's the whole contradiction. Imagine you're a lawyer <laughs> sitting at a desk in Chicago, getting off work at 6:30, having a family, having a mother-in-law, going to church on Sunday morning, and then Sunday morning when you get home from church and you pull the kids in from the yard, you pull up your Shopify site and you got two <laughs> stupid-looking products on there with stock <laughs> photography, and that's exactly what it takes. I, I was reading this blog the other day. It's like. Uh, my online income success diary or whatever, he's like an attorney or he's a tax prep guy. It was just cool to see some guy who's like, you know what, I'm experimenting, I come home at night and I'm putting up niche sites. It's like, fuck yeah, in 36 months, you think a guy who's smart enough to be some kind of tax consultant guy, he's gonna be able to figure out how to make four or five grand a month. And you can see when you go to his about page, his goal was initially to like make five grand a month in extra income, you know? And then he he's exit out and put it to 10 grand. It's like, <laughs> exactly because he was willing to look like a dipshit for a while. Yes. And maybe even when you're a guy that's like 55 or 45, come down to a guy like Travis who's 26 and say, I'm gonna learn something from this kid. Right. You yeah. know? I think the, the key is yes, to constantly keep looking like a dipshit. <laughs> it, it really is. I mean, you're not learning. People right. looked at me like that. Started, I was a bartender saying, oh, <laughs> I've started this internet company selling a supplement. I think, what? Yeah, right. I'm still behind the bar talking about it. At the time. <laughs> and then, you know, a year later, I'm making twice the salary they are living in Bali. Right. And they, they look at you a little differently. They're like, oh, shit, he was serious. And again, it's like, it's, it's that internal passion and conviction. Like, this is worth doing, regardless of the money. Right. Like, in principle, it's worth doing my own thing. In principle, it's worth doing things I'm passionate about. You know, for me, I was like, I'm going to be less successful. I'm going to make less money, and people in my life are going to give me less respect because I'm making this decision. But I'm going to do it 
because it's so important that I learn how to be in control of my own life that I'm willing to do it and to wake up every morning and say, I'm going to do what I want today. I'm not, you know, do you remember? I don't know. You never had a real job. I remember feeling nervous when I had to go to the fucking dentist because I was worried about whether my boss would let me out of work and all that's fucking bullshit. That's no way to live a human fucking life. You know, especially when you got all this kind of technology and knowledge at our hands. I mean, I understand people are in <coughs> bad situations every now and then. Got a gecko fight going. Ah! <laughs> That's a bullshit way to live. And I was so committed to owning my own shit that I was willing to say, fuck everybody, I'm going to go for it. And it turns out that, of course, all my expectations were upturned. I turned out to have more respect because I acted in accordance with my desires. And people see that and they think integrity, right? And I made more money because although at the beginning I was a dipshit, right. like Simon so kindly <laughs> advocates, and I was making no money, that shit builds up. What does Einstein say? It's like the compounding interest is the most powerful force in the world. Well, your time getting pissed away to somebody else's corporation year after year after year after year without building skills that are putting you on a trajectory to absolutely do your own thing. Right you are pissing away your most valuable compounding asset, which is your time, your skill set, your knowledge. And here I am, the guy who is gonna have less respect, less money, and you guys are in the same exact boat. More money, more respect. More time. More time. Yeah, what are we gonna do tomorrow? Whatever we want. Whatever we want. (laughs) All right, guys, so the best place to reach you, Travis Jameson, Supremacy SEO, Simon Stock from the now defunct Simon Stock Project blog. Where can we get in touch with you? Just Twitter it up. <laughs> we, we call, uh, I think somebody should buy the domain at be an e-commerce dipshit and sell it to Simon. Simon at e-commerce dipshit.com. <laughs> Daily That's mistakes. S stock on Twitter, yeah? Yeah, SS stock. SS stock on Twitter. Travis, you on Twitter yet, man? Nope. Are you going to get on Twitter? I don't think so. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks for listening. Don't be shy, we've got a mailing list. Check it out at tropicalmba.com. Get yourself signed up and we'll keep you up to date on everything we do, plus give you those 50 free podcast episodes. If you want to say hey, check me out on Twitter at TropicalMBA. We'll see you soon.